Hi everybody, today I want to talk about buying hunting land as an investment. Um, hunting land and timber land in general can be an excellent investment. Now, I have a list of 10 ways you can make income from a piece of land. And I'll get into that. And I, I also want you to check out, I'm going to put down in the description, a link to a blog article I wrote on my site about the history of timberland and how it's always gone up with a couple little glitches here and there like during the great depression and during economic downturns you had a couple little dips but generally your, uh, your value of timberland is you know it's up and up uh, and the interesting thing about land and what makes it better than stocks and precious metals and things is that it's real, it's real estate. That's why they call it real estate. So you can buy land, you can walk on it, see it, enjoy it. You can hunt there and enjoy it with your family. You can leave it to your kids and hopefully they'll hunt and take care of it the way you did. So it's a great thing in that respect where um, your stocks is a, that's a piece of paper that can be worth zero one day. Land will never be worth zero, okay? So that's one positive thing about it. Uh, the other great thing about land is that, besides being able to hunt and recreate on it, is that it's a great hedge against inflation. If you're a high income earner, there are many tax advantages to owning timber land. So, um, now that, that's a, a subject for another video, but um, let's talk about uh, land investing for the long term, okay? So if you, whenever you do an investment analysis, you want to do a timeline, okay? So let's say that this is 30 years, and you know, you're, you're in your 30s, you're making good money, you want to buy a piece of land and, and have it as an investment, and then in 30 years, pass it on to your kids, okay? Or sell it. Now, what's important is, let's say these are negative cash flows and above the line is positive cash flow. So your negative cash flow is your purchase price and your closing costs and survey, etc. And let's say you have a half a mil in that. It's very important because of the time value of money to front load your positive cash flows. Now, how do you do that? Well. For one thing, you can do a timber sale, okay? You can do a timber sale right away, all right? Now, in another video I talked about doing, it's the first thing you ought to do when you buy land is to evaluate your timber so that you can separate the timber commodity from the land value, okay? This is tax-free income, okay? And that's a complicated issue that I won't go into in this video, but Tax-free income from timber. So you do, let's say you do a timber sale here, you do a pulpwood sale here, you get a little income, also tax-free, and in 20 years you do another timber sale, okay? Timber sale. And so these are all positive cash flows, but if the important part of investing is getting a positive cash flow early. You don't want it out here because you have to apply a discount rate to it. It's not worth as much as it is right now. So the other things that you can do to get a uh, positive cash flow right now, let's say that you you can, uh, let's pick one here. I, t I covered tax deductions a little bit. Oil, gas, and minerals. That's kind of a, a uh, something that you have to kind of be an insider to know uh, what's going on with the gas rights and the mineral rights. And if you're if you're in a boom time like what we were in Eastern Ohio a little while ago, uh, Northern Pennsylvania, uh, you could buy land in the morning and sell it at a profit the same day and make a ton of money. But that's not what I'm talking about. Uh, this is something that's iffy. People who bought land, like I said, that 
inherited land, bought land real cheap. They're farming it. They're struggling. They don't even know if they want to keep it. All of a sudden, they get a check for uh, half a million dollars for their gas lease. You never know. And then sometimes, um, it used to be coal. Uh, there's, there's shallow gas. There's Marcellus shale gas. And then there's Utica shale gas, which could be down the road in the future. So it's not a bad idea to be in the fairway for those shale formations, you never know. And you wanna try and, if you can, if you can find it, buy land that has the oil, gas, and mineral rights with it, okay? So that's something that could be anywhere. That could be positive cash flow way down here somewhere. Um, you never know. But timber sales are something that you can measure what you have when you buy the land. And you can also apply growth rates to that. You can also increase the growth rates of the high quality timber so that when you do a timber sale 20 years down the road in here, then uh, you're going to have a lot more board feet. Okay. So let's say you do some pulpwood harvesting in here. Every 10 years you do pulpwood harvesting and you keep increasing the the growth rate on your quality trees so that 20 years down the road, 25 years down the road, you're going to have some super timber that's very valuable. Now, you never know with uh, uh, timber prices. Timber prices are all over the place. They don't always go up. Uh, if, if you bought cherry, a piece of land with cherry on it back in the 60s or 70s, um, you know, you're it was like finding gold on your land because in the 80s and 90s, the cherry went completely crazy and now you can't give it away. So who knows? Uh, generally, species like the mixed oak forest, which is the main forest here in the uh, Ridge and Valley region of Pennsylvania, um, it has its ups and downs, but it, there's a steady market for it. You can always sell it, okay? So um, other income possibilities from land is a subdivision. So you buy here and it may take you a year or two years. You can subdivide off a piece uh, that is, has high value, something that has road frontage, let's say. Uh, there's a stream there. It's next to state land. There's, there could be a piece, uh, you know, that shaped like that and here's the public road well there's a little building lot right there that really isn't any good for hunting because it's small and you know maybe there's a house here and a house here well it would make a lot of sense to sell that lot and then keep this part okay let's say that you have some tillable land this is all tillable you could sell that to a farmer. You can lease that to a farmer. Okay. So we have ta uh, timber sales, subdivision, oil, gas, and minerals, tax deductions. Here's one you probably never heard of is landscape trees. You could plant trees in this and sell them to wholesalers and, uh, you know, get yourself a some equipment if you want to get into that get yourself some equipment that you can root prune trees and you can prune the trees and make them really nice looking and sell those uh, you can make hundreds of, hundreds of dollars an acre from landscape trees uh, farm and grazing lease so you can lease the tillable land and get income every year from that tillable land uh, if it's uh, pasture you can pasture some horses or cattle on there. Wind and solar lease. Uh, say you're up on a ridge here. Here's the ridge and you know you you buy this piece of land and somebody comes along and this is hit or miss too but you know I see it all the time and, and you can't take advantage of this stuff unless you own the land. So get some land, get a, the biggest piece of land you can possibly afford and money comes to you. They'll find you, believe me. So you get some windmills up there, if you can stand that. Um, I wouldn't do it myself, but it's damn good income. 
saw a guy uh, up where I hunt. There's a steep south facing slope with a field full of solar panels. And you know, you can hunt on the rest of it. The solar panels are kind of innocuous. Um, it's a stupid waste of money, tax, but it's taxpayer money and they're giving it away. So you might as well grab it, okay? So wind and solar. Oh, carbon credits. I love carbon credits. Carbon credits, um, that's a that's a whole other uh, issue that is, is a video I need to make by itself. But you can actually uh, sell, if, if you're doing good forest management, and this is one thing I like about it, is that the stuff that I do anyway on Timberland, you can get paid to do through the carbon credit program. Now, it's usually larger tracts of land. So the bigger, the better. The bigger it is, the, the more attractive it is to the brokers who sell these carbon credits. But that's a great way to make some income off your land. And uh, uh, some of those, since you're, you're in a long-term uh, investment here, uh, those are those, those carbon credits tie up your land for a little while. You have to enter into a an agreement that you're going to do that for uh, 10, 15, 20, 30 years. I don't, I don't know. It all depends on the on the broker that you're going through. But it's a long term thing. But it's income for something you're going to do anyway. So it makes a lot of sense. And then there's the time value. Uh, like I said in the beginning, I see people all the time that bought land for a couple hundred bucks an acre and it's worth 10 times that in their lifetime. So it's a wonderful investment. The beauty of it, of course, is that you can hunt, fish, ride your four wheelers and, and enjoy your family time together on a piece of land that's private. There's nothing better in the world to me. And it's something that you can work on. A lot of people uh, do a lot of improvements on their land. It's almost like a recreation for them. So there's 10 reasons and 10 uh, income sources. And the main reason, of course, of owning timberland is the financial gain from it. Uh, you cannot beat it. It's very risk-free. And uh, if you need to buy some land, you can call me. I'm in central Pennsylvania. There are some really nice tracts of land on the market today. If you're looking to sell land, if you're down at this end of your your uh, investment in your land and you, you're ready to turn it into cash, call me and I'll get that sold for you. Right now is a great time to sell, actually. It's a seller's market. Um, so get in touch with me and I'll see you on the next video. Be sure and hit the like and subscribe button and click on the bell so you'll be notified when there's a new video. And comment down below and let me know if there's anything you'd like to know more about.